Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're comparing the Ryzen 9 3900X head to head against the Core i9 9900K in 36 games because apparently I don't like sleep. Anyway, there's loads of results to go over, but before we jump into all those benchmark results, here's just a few quick notes on the test system setup. The 3900X has been tested on the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Extreme using the latest BIOS revision, and there are two test configurations. The first of which I'm calling stock is the 3900X with the Wraithspire RGB box cooler, and nothing more than the XMP profile loaded in the BIOS using DDR4-3200CL14 memory. Then we have an overclock configuration using DDR4-3600CL16 memory, the Corsair Hydro H115i 280mm all-in-one liquid cooler, with PBO Plus Auto OC enabled. There's also stock and overclock configurations for the Core i9-1900K as well, though they are both technically overclocked as we're not manually power limiting the Intel CPU. So I guess it's better explained as out of the box and then manually overclocked. Anyway, the stock or out of the box configuration uses DDR4-3200CL14 memory with the Corsair H115i on the Gigabyte Z390 Ultra. Then for the overclocked configuration, the memory has been upgraded to DDR4-3600CL16 with an all-core clock of 5 GHz. All testing takes place at 1080p using the MSI RTX 2080 Ti Gaming X Trio, and while we'll look at the margins for all 36 games towards the end of the video, I'm only going to discuss the results for about a dozen of the titles tested. For the rest of the results, you can find them over on our Patreon page for free, link is in the video description. Okay, let's get into it. First up we have World War Z. Both platforms have been tested using the latest version which brings about a number of fixes and performance improvements. Both stock and overclocked, the 1900K was just 2% faster than the 3900X, and that's obviously a negligible difference. Needless to say, the gaming experience was indistinguishable between the two CPUs, and both allowed the RTX 2080 Ti to render well over 160 FPS at all times. Next up we have Forza Horizon 4, and here the 3900X trailed by a 4% margin when comparing the stock out of the box performance. That margin halved with both CPUs overclocked, and at this point I think it's fair to say the 1900K is maximising the RTX 2080 Ti's performance. This is largely a GPU bound title, but it's still worth testing given the game quality and its popularity. Now, StarCraft 2. It's been heavily requested for this comparison, and I have to admit, this is the first time I've really benchmarked this game in a worst case scenario. Previous benchmarks have been based on 2v2 gameplay, but it seems where Ryzen really struggles is with the bigger 4v4 matches when all teams are maxed out. So what we have here is an absolute worst case scenario, and unfortunately for AMD, the 1900K is up to 19% faster out of the box, seen when comparing the average frame rate. With both CPUs overclocked, the 1900K was still 12% faster, which is quite a reasonable performance advantage. That said, they did have similar 1% low performance, so the difference wasn't that easy to spot. Another title where Ryzen really seems to struggle is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and please note, we're not using the built-in benchmark, which I believe does help out the third-gen Ryzen processors. So this is in-game performance, and here the 1900K was 17% faster, which is a rather large margin, and I had hoped the 3900X would do better here. Where the 3900X did surprise me was in Monster Hunter World. Here both processors deliver a similar average frame rate, yet the 1% low figure was 13% higher for the Ryzen processor. Not only that, but once overclocked, the 3900X was the clear winner, offering not just greater 1% low performance, but also slightly improved average frame rates as well. The 1900K did get back to its winning ways in Apex Legends, though here the 3900X was just 7% slower, dropping 10 FPS on average when comparing the stock performance. That said, the margin did grow slightly once both CPUs were overclocked, now the 3900X is seen to be 10% slower. The second Battle Royale title tested is Fortnite, and while the 3900X was plenty fast, it was still quite a bit slower than the 9900K, although we do only see a 5% deficit for the average frame rate. The Ryzen processor was up to 13% slower when looking at the 1% low performance, but if you don't need over 160 FPS, then the 3900X will do just fine. But again, I should just say that if you do seek maximum performance, you'll obviously want the 9900K. The Resident Evil 2 results are quite interesting. Stock the 3900X was 6% slower on average, but provided stronger 1% low performance, beating the 1900K by a 4% margin. Then when overclocked, the average frame rates were much the same, though the Ryzen processor still provided much better minimum frame rate performance. Overall, the experience was much the same using either CPU. 
Next up, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and this is another one of those titles where, yeah, look, the Intel CPU is faster on average, but you'll never notice a 4% reduction in average frame rate when using the 3900X. And that's particularly true given the strong 1% low performance of the Ryzen processor. Well, this is quite interesting. AMD claimed in their own first party benchmarks that the 3900X was faster than the 1900K in the Counter-Strike Global Offensive benchmark. And I have to admit, I didn't really believe them, but lo and behold, the 3900X was a smidgen faster. Performance was basically the same overall, but I didn't really expect the 3900X to push average frame rates higher than that of the 9900K. Despite offering silky smooth frame rates in Battlefield 5, the 3900X was still quite a bit down on the 1900K, trailing by an 8% margin for the average frame rate and an 11% margin for the 1% low. We see similar margins for both the stock and overclocked results. Moving on to F1 2019, and here the 3900X was 7% slower out of the box, but once overclocked that margin was reduced to just 3%, as both processors now enabled a similar level of performance. This is another one of those instances where if you don't need to keep frame rates well above, say, 144 FPS, it really doesn't matter which CPU you use. The third last game we're going to look at is Far Cry New Dawn, and this isn't a particularly great title for AMD CPUs, though it's not a bad one either. Here the 3900X was 9% slower out of the box and 10% once both CPUs were overclocked. Frame rates were perfectly acceptable, but for maximum performance, the 9900K does deliver the best results. The third and final Battle Royale style game that I've tested is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. And just to be clear, I'm not using the replay feature to measure performance in this one. Rather, I'm dropping into the same map in the same spot and measuring performance that way. The 900K was overall faster, but the 3900X was just 4% slower on average. So not a bad result for AMD here. Then finally, finishing up the benchmarks is World of Tanks, and here the 3900X was 8% slower when looking at the average frame rate. Both CPUs push frame rates up over 200 FPS, so again, I'm not sure how important that 8% difference is here. Overall, the 9900K looks to be the faster of the two CPUs for gaming, but who's surprised by that? I have to say though, it did look pretty close, so I think we should move on to some performance breakdown graphs to see just what the difference was across all 36 games tested. Okay, so on average, the 3900X was just 6% slower than the 1900K, and really that's not too bad at all. Now, I say this all the time, but I'll say it again, for titles where the margin was 5% or less, I deem those as a draw. This is because you're generally looking at margin of error type differences. For example, 30 to 32 FPS, well, that's a 7% increase. Then for extreme high frame rates, a 5% increase is like going from 200 to 210 FPS. It's not exactly a margin worth getting too excited over. Anyway, I know the vast majority of you get how percentages work, so sorry for that very basic explanation. Moving along, there were a few titles where the 3900X nudged ahead by insignificant margins, and there were quite a few where it lost by an insignificant margin. In fact, exactly half of the games tested saw an irrelevant margin separating these two processes. There were a few games where the 3900X was slower by a 10% margin or greater. Seven games in fact, and we see that worst case, the Ryzen processor was up to 16% slower. Now just quickly, with both CPUs overclocked, we see very little change. Here the 3900X was 5% slower on average, so pushing the 9900K up to 5 GHz doesn't really give it an advantage. So not much more to say here really, let's just move on to wrap this thing up. Alright, so in my day one review, I found the 3900X to be 8% slower on average across the nine games tested. And here we see by adding another 27 games to the mix that it didn't change too much, but I was quite surprised to find that it actually played a little bit into AMD's favor. I mean, the 3900X still was overall the slower processor, but it did close the gap. And that's because our day one review omitted games such as Counter-Strike, Global Offensive, Monster Hunter World, Ashes of the Benchmark, and Insurgency Sandstorm. I've just decided now as I'm wrapping this video up that I think I will cycle through as many of the benchmark graphs as I can. So for the ones that we haven't seen, I'm just gonna throw them up for a few seconds. But again, for easier viewing of all these graphs, please head over to our Patreon page. The link will be in the video description. When it comes to value, these new results don't change too much. If you ignore the box cooler, the 3900X is a little more costly per frame than the 9900K. However, if you wish to take advantage of the box cooler, then the 3900X is a little cheaper than the Intel processor. At the end of the day, they're both $500-ish CPUs, and depending on what you use your PC for, one may be better than the other. For example, if you plan to not just play games, but also work on your PC, 
create videos maybe, 3D modeling, or really anything else that can take advantage of a 12 core processor, then the Ryzen 9 3900X is going to be a significantly better investment. In fact, it will almost certainly prove to be the better investment if you plan on keeping whatever you're buying now for the next three years or more. The only reason I'd invest in the 9900K right now would be if I played games such as StarCraft 2 that do play noticeably better with the Intel CPU, at least late game in 4v4 battles. Likewise, you'd really only go Intel if for some reason you needed every last frame possible. But short of that, the 3900X is the better choice and this will become even more evident moving forward. It's also worth remembering that we see very little difference at 1080p with an RTX 2080 Ti. This means using an RTX 2080 more than halves the margins we see here. I know this because I've looked into it. Then with an RTX 2070 or RX 5700, performance will be identical. Alternatively, if you play at a higher resolution that's more GPU bound, well, you'll find the same thing. Very little difference in terms of performance. Overall, not much more to say on this one. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Always much appreciated from us. And if you would like to support the channel more directly while also receiving some pretty cool perks, such as access to our private Discord server, our monthly live streams that Tim and I do where you can ask questions and request tests and all that kind of stuff, then yeah, head over to our Patreon page. And again, you'll find all the other graphs there as well. As always, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.